Your papers, please. Your papers. Science denier. Science denier. Sci heretic. 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 Your papers. You must science believe the science. science. You must, believe the science. You must believe the science. You must believe the science. It's for your safety. It's for your safety. It's Compliance your is safety. mandatory. You must it's comply. Comply. Papers, comply. Please. Effective. Your papers. It's safe and effective. You must believe the science. It's safe you and effective. You must believe the science. It's you safe and effective. Your papers. It's safe and effective. It's mandatory. You must comply. Comply. It's safe and effective. It's safe and effective. It's safe and effective. You're killing me, Larry! Oh, hello, Larry! Hands off to Larry! Larry. Fucking Larry. Larry. Larry! 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 Get into bed now! Come on, Larry! Larry! If you've been listening a while, you know this show has a kind of an obsession with Doomsday. In fact, the fifth episode was called Larry Preps. And it was a glimpse into what a dystopian future might look like once civilization collapses into chaos. <laughs> that was four years ago. The future I envisioned way back then. Well, it's looking eerily familiar. Since then, I've occasionally added to what I call my doomsday suite. Covered it from a number of angles. One of them was a pandemic. It was entitled, The Killer Plague is Here. It's in the April 2019 tab at thatlarryshow.com. Long before anyone heard of the Wuhan flu or COVID-19. Well, well, here we are in mid-May 2021. And what a shit show we have in these divided states of America, huh? Not sure if doomsday is imminent, but things are looking troubling. War in the Middle East, $5 gas, a gas shortage, spiking inflation, unemployment way up, crime up, suicides up, and horrific mess at the southern border. But nasty tweets are way down, thank God for that. <laughs> but above all else, there's the big, big battle shaping up the one that may light the fuse. Why? Because all that other sturm und drang can be dealt with. Those issues have been around before. They heat up, they cool down. But this vaccine controversy, ooh, this is personal, as personal as any issue could possibly be. People who want to get vaccinated should. And once they are, they should feel safer. Except a lot of them don't. Because a number of people who have been vaccinated still somehow become reinfected with this virus. Which says something about how effective this so-called vaccine is. Here's what one highly credentialed doctor said about calling them vaccines. He said it's, quote, a misjustice of the language because it in no way, shape, or form even comes close to the legal definition of a vaccine. It does not improve your immune response to the infection. It does not limit you from getting an infection. This is a gene therapy, an experimental gene therapy, unquote. The government and Big Pharma and a lot of people are demanding that everyone get vaccinated. Everyone, no exceptions, from six-month-old infants to geriatrics. That's some kind of pretzel logic, isn't it? You take, and then demand others take, a drug that will not render you immune from reinfection. And that's clearly stated even by the big drug companies manufacturing this stuff. All they do promise, and it's with a fuck ton of caveats and disclaimers, is that if you do get infected, your symptoms may be less severe. For a while, they were saying their drugs were 100% effective against COVID hospitalization and even death. <laughs> That's a mighty bold claim. And not one teleprompter reading talking head asked the question, how do you arrive at a 100% figure for a drug that's only been available for a few months? How do you substantiate that claim? Well, they didn't, and they don't because they can't. When you really boil it down, <laughs> it's a little like rape. 
They want to stick something in you without your consent. Inject you with a foreign substance. The long-term effects of which nobody fucking knows. Nobody. They can call it warp speed. They can call it the Millennium Falcon. They can call it Popeye's can of magic fucking spinach. But the fact is, they don't know. They can't know until years elapse. Which is why the research cycle and proof of efficacy for every other vaccine, real vaccines that provide real immunity, not just cross your fingers bullshit, the real McCoys take 10 years to safely develop. And now, vaccine passports. <laughs> Already schools are demanding them. Corporations are. How long until you'll need one? To enter a supermarket or a doctor's office or emergency room, maybe even to gas up your car. Oddly, we live in a time where choice and diversity are celebrated. You can choose your own gender. We don't say gender here, but in this context, I'll give myself a special dispensation. You can choose to be any of what is the current total, 72 genders? You can self-identify as a furry animal or a superhero or a pepperoni pizza. It's all good and nobody really gives a shit. And diversity, that's a really popular word. The mission statements of thousands of institutions, schools, corporations, and government agencies, they all say diversity is our strength. Where's the choice or the diversity in medical decisions, hmm? Like, say, for those people who have had the disease, recovered from the disease, and are confident that their own immune system, cranking out those COVID antibodies, will provide them with more than adequate protection. Plenty of scientists and medical experts share that opinion, but no, 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 no. Fauci and Pharma, they know better. They know everything. They're so smart. You take that vaccine anyway, they say. And what about that other group with a diverse opinion? Those who may be in the very low risk groups and say, hey, with a 99% plus survival rate, I'll, I think I'll take my chances with a virus and treat it with therapeutics. Again, government and big pharma say no. There will be no choice or diversity there either. They're banning ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and whatever else has been proven to successfully knock down the virus. It's their way or the highway. Well, actually, it's, it's not the highway. It's their way or a complete lockout from society. Notice how things have gone from lockdown to lock out. That's coming. You want to Get on a train or a plane or a bus or have a meal in a restaurant or go to school or an office or a concert or a game. But it's not going to be papers. All these news stories now about people going to jail for forging vaccine verification cards. Ha! They'll do it the same way that chai -coms control their sheep. With cell phones and apps. Or about everyone who gets the jab gets a lifetime RFD bracelet. In every supermarket, mall, train station, or airport will have those sensors at the door. You got the bracelet? You ease on in. You don't? Ooh, it's... <laughs> Seems that nearly every issue that's tearing America apart boils down to those simple categories of people, astcos and lutfas, that I identified back in episode 292. Living in the Shadows in 2021. When I created that episode, I was mostly referring to the rampant censorship of diverse opinions on social media, in the workplace and universities. And vast numbers of people do live in the shadows, biting their tongues, remaining silent for fear of cancellation, firing, or expulsion. Those categories are astcos, that's assholes seeking to control others, and lutfas, that's leave us the fuck alone. They span every race, religion, and socioeconomic level. 
People who want to live their lives in freedom versus people who can't keep their fucking noses out of others' business. Their urge to control and manipulate and dictate and arrange the lives of others is more powerful than sex or hunger. It is. There's an endless audio loop that plays in their fucking pointy heads day and night, whether conscious or awake, and it only has four words. We are one, we are one, kumbaya, we are one, we are one, we are one, kumbaya, we are one. It's that simple, Astkos and Luftas. But back to Doomsday. The world, or at least the United States, has become so catastrophically fucked up, you have to wonder what the solution is, or is there a solution? It's almost as if there's a brawl with all the kitties in a sandbox, and it's time for some, some authority figure to step in, kick ass, and take names. The concept is not new. The Bible has multiple scenarios, right? People turning into assholes and pow, here's a flood, asshole people. And only Noah and his crew and zoo survived. Sodom and Gomorrah, kaboom. Fire and brimstone reduced it to rubble. And the Bible and God aside, the earth itself is kind of a self-regulating system, isn't it? It's just a little less discriminating in its punishments. Typhoons and earthquakes and tsunamis and floods and volcanoes, the earth has a fantastic arsenal of events to thin the population, and you needn't go back to biblical times to find them. Floods in China in 1931 killed as many as 4 million. That uh, tsunami in 2004 in the South Pacific, that took out a quarter million. All those spectacular disasters are dramatic, but... Uh, not all that efficient at population reduction. The most deadly things come in microscopic packages, as we've learned. Cancers, viruses. The all-time champ was bubonic plague, which, as near as they can figure, wiped out anywhere between one-third and two-thirds of the entire world back in the 14th century. When there are no volcanoes or tidal waves available, we are very adept at killing ourselves cook up a world war or two, maybe a religious or racial genocide. And when it's all quiet on those fronts, we'll design our own fucking plague, which it seems more and more of the evidence points to that being the case with this Wuhan virus. The uh, wet market bat soup or pangolin fairy tale, well, that didn't hold water for very long. And one need not be an epidemiologist to figure that out. China's a very old country. After, what, five, six thousand years, people decide to eat new animals when there's no famine? Hell no. That wet market theory was bullshit. No, it seems this thing was engineered by assholes in tailored suits and lab coats. They had to fuck around with known deadly viruses and tease them and tweak them and ramp up their lethality. But of course, they dared not call that exercise by its real name, so instead they invented a smokescreen term for it to bedazzle all the mouth breathers. They called it gain-of-function research. Gain-of-function might be something written on a package of Viagra, or maybe a term used in physical therapy with someone trying to recover from a serious injury. But tweaking a virus to make it more deadly or transmissible and then calling that effort gain of function, well, that's some demon tear sick fuck mendacity right there. What's laughable are the smooth brains who refuse to even consider the possibility of that being the origin of the novel coronavirus. And their stupidity always comes from the same place. Well, p people would do that. This is the 21st century. We've evolved. As if hideous creeps have just magically disappeared. Or that they only exist as obvious loner freaks like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. But then, John Wayne Gacy was a respected man in his Chicago neighborhood. He would often perform at hospitals and orphanages in his happy clown costume. He was a precinct captain of the Democratic Party. 
Everybody thought Gacy was a pillar of the community. Until they dug up 33 people from the floorboards of his house. Nobody seems to think creeps and ghouls can be educated, successful, respected, gregarious, charming, leaders even, but they are. And they do shit just as twisted and sick and evil as those more transparent, obvious creeps. Like that other Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein. But Jeff Epstein was a lot more presentable than Jeff Dahmer. The ultra-presentable creeps that rise up in academia, corporations, and politics, those are the heavyweights. Those ones make decisions that affect the lives of you, your children, even your grandchildren. Those sick fucks are dangerous and evil. And we're not even certain who they are, although we've got a pretty good idea in some cases, don't we? Joe Stalin, who was responsible for the deaths of at least 20 million, he was a sick boy. He, uh, he had a well-funded scientific initiative created to breed men with apes and create humanzies, super soldiers. Not too bright, but strong as fuck and cheap to feed. No one questions that Adolf and his deep bench of creeps dreamed up endless ways to efficiently kill millions. Plenty of institutionalized sick shit happens right here in the USA. Like the Tuskegee experiment that used a bunch of sharecroppers as guinea pigs and let dozens of them die of syphilis when there was plenty of penicillin that could have saved them. That circus of government evil, that went on for 40 years. Finally ended in 1972. Oh, and let's not forget the CIA ghouls with their MK Ultra shit that drove people insane and or to suicide. So why, why is it so hard to believe that shit like gain of function ghouls didn't drop a test tube in Wuhan and start this pandemic? There's a troubling money trail from the United States to China that underwrote that viral laboratory in Wuhan. People have not changed since they first appeared on this planet, and they never, ever will. So who's going to finally settle this shit, huh? <laughs> well, religious people say God. But which one? How about the Old Testament one with a mane of white hair and lightning shooting out of his eyeballs as he rides a flaming chariot flanked by battalions of sword-swinging angels? That's kind of cool. Maybe it will be that Hindu goddess of destruction, Kali. Ooh, I, I really like her style. She looks maniacal and kind of pointy and has four arms and wears a necklace of a couple dozen shrunken heads and she holds a big-ass gurkha knife. Her mission is to destroy evil and protect the innocent. Well, then her first stop would have to be Washington, D.C., right? Just to terminate all the frauds, grifters, pedos, punks, drunks, liars, lechers, and parasites. Next stop, Silicon Valley. Give those oligarchs a taste of deplatforming in the form of beheading <laughs> and live stream it over their own social networks. Wouldn't that be fun? What would their trust and safety departments have to say about that? Ooh. Then Kali could hop over to Beijing and Havana and Caracas and every other commie shithole. Taking all that garbage out might give the rest of the planet a fighting chance. My personal favorite would be seeing Jesus return. Not on a donkey, but at the tip of a formation of Apache gunships. He'd be manning that M230 chain cannon and lighting up all kinds of evil creeps. And just before they were vaporized, the same thought would cross their diseased minds or escape their food vacuole mouths. But he's supposed to be a nice guy. <laughs> well, yeah, he is. He is a nice guy, but he's also no chooch and no doormat. And what of his return to earth? Well, here's a direct quote from uh, Matthew's gospel. Quote, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set 
a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Unquote. Whoa. Is there a biblical prophecy that better describes the state of the world at this moment? At no time in the history of this planet have people been more at each other's throats. If you think back for many years, decades, doctors and uh, big chain drugstores have been hawking flu shots. And millions of people got them. Do you ever recall ever, ever, ever seeing those shots described as vaccines? No, you did not, because they are and were not vaccines. What government and big pharma have done is change the definition of vaccines. How many people noticed that? Not so many, it would appear. Words matter. They really, really do. Lockdown was a word invented for prisons. When a riot broke out or somebody escaped, the warden would lock it down. Did you notice how quickly the pandemic word morphed from quarantine to lockdown? How many people noticed or cared about that? A lot of them got turned on by the word. And so next up is locked out. But they're already putting a cutesy poo spin on that very accurate term, right? It's going to be vaccine passports. So many positive connotations go along with the word passport, right? International travel, adventure, romance. Who doesn't want a passport? Watch how quickly they'll drop the vaccine prefix and substitute something nice. Huh? Freedom passport, fun passport, adventure passports. There's probably already a team of advertising wonks working on it. <laughs> Hey, thanks for hanging with me once again. It's always great to be with you. For more content and commentary, as well as uh, hundreds more episodes, visit ThatLarryShow.com. While you're there, click a subscribe button so you never miss an episode. If you really like what you just heard, why not help me keep this thing going and join the Take No Shit Dojo. Click the Patreon or PayPal buttons. Or if you prefer snail mail, there's a P.O. Box address right on the homepage at ThatLarryShow.com. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Mastodon. All those links are on the homepage as well. I'll see you next Wednesday or thereabouts. And until that time, take no shit. <laughs>